We have four stories for you this week. Yes, this is actually going to be a bit of a longer update than usual, uh, but there's a lot going on. So first, there is a controversial Texas bill that aims to ban certain drones. We talked about this, but there's an update. Uh, second, Florida considers a bill to allow reasonable force against drones over private property. Uh, third, Oregon passes a stricter penalties on drones that are interfering with emergency responders. And then finally, Skybras and Paladin partner for real-time 3D modeling in DFR programs. So let's get to it. And first up this week, let's talk about the Texas House Bill 41. Now, this proposed legislation, which I think we've talked about before, aims to ban certain types of drones, primarily the one that are manufactured in China, uh, claiming that it would protect Texas from foreign technology risks. However, this bill is facing some major pushbacks, and I'm putting major here in all caps, uh, especially from the public safety community in Texas. Uh, at a recent hearing, firefighters, police, and search and rescue professionals tested Testify against the bill. Uh, there was actually not a single entity out there uh, that is doing public safety work that was for the bill uh, because it uh, risks removing critical tools that they rely on daily. Now, interestingly, the or maybe not so interestingly, the bill's main backers were not frontline responders, uh, but rather private groups like AUVSI and State Armor, uh, which are lobbying organization rather than really drone operators. Uh, the argument for the ban often points to cybersecurity security concerns, referring to an older DHS memo, uh, but critics highlights that multiple independent audits have been uh, showing no data leaks uh, from commonly used platforms. Many of these agencies are using US-based software like DroneSense, for example, uh, which meets the top standards like SOC2, Type 2, and then FedRAMP, which is pending at the moment, on using the Chinese hardware. Heck, even some of the federal government uses DJI drones right here uh, with waivers for highly secure event like, for example, the presidential inauguration. Imagine that. This really makes you question the actual true extent of the risk compared to the operational impact that this would have. Now, furthermore, there is the practical side of things. Uh, US drone manufacturers currently cannot really produce the needed drones at scale or even at cost, which is obviously a big issue, uh, effectively to replace the existing fleets immediately. Now, HB41 could force agencies to scrap perfectly good and effective equipment within the next five years, uh, potentially wasting millions of dollars in in taxpayer money uh, on more expensive and less capable and less reliable, quite frankly, alternatives. We've already seen examples where drones that would be banned under HB 41 uh, are saving lives and help solve major crimes in Texas. This bill feels a lot less about security and more like protectionism, if you ask me, uh, that could seriously hamper public safety efforts. Unfortunately, the update here is that it's passed committee that needs to clear the House Calendar Committee uh, for a full vote. We're not done, unfortunately, with the bill that are bad news. Uh, a bill was introduced on the Ohio Senate, uh, which would ban the use of unmanned aircraft that are manufactured and assembled by a foreign adversary. Purchasing would be affected immediately and the ban on usage would go into effect on May 1st of 2027, so in a few years. Uh, if you're in Ohio, also please reach out to your state representative and your senators. Uh, this bill was just introduced actually as of like this morning or yesterday uh, as we're recording this, so reaching out right now is uh, very important uh, to show you our position. Again, go to the Drone Advocacy Alliance for that. And unfortunately, we're not done. Next up, if you're in Florida, you'll want to pay close attention to Senate Bill 1422. Uh, this bill is advancing through the state legislature at the moment and could allow homeowners to use reasonable force, in quotation mark here, uh, to stop drones they believe are conducting surveillance over the property below 500 feet, below 500 feet. Somebody did not do their research when they wrote this. Now, this builds on the Florida's existing Freedom from Unwarranted Surveillance Act, that's something that's been around, and it seems fueled with uh, privacy concern, like reports of insurance companies that are using drones for home inspection. Uh, we all value privacy, quite frankly, myself first, I've talked about this before, but this bill raises some serious red flags. Uh, here's a huge issue on top of all this. Uh, the bill directly conflicts with federal laws, obviously. Uh, the FA considers drones aircraft and interfering with or shooting down an aircraft is a federal crime under 49 U.S.C. 4102. Now, the FAA explicitly warns that shooting at any aircraft poses a significant safety hazard. 
duh. Uh, and carries penalties, including hefty fines and up to 20 years in prison. Uh, even state senator uh, Jason Pizzo, he said, you can't just take your gun out and start firing a drone. Uh, you're going to have to deal with the FA, and I would add probably with the FBI as well. Not even to mention, most places, most cities have laws where you can discharge firearms within city limits. So uh, just doesn't make any sense. Anyways, uh, what makes this even trickier is that the term reasonable force uh, is not defined in the bill. Uh, does it mean yelling at the drone, using a net, using a jamming device, which is illegal or worse? So the ambiguity here is pretty dangerous, uh, invites misinterpretation, uh, potentially putting pilots and people on the ground at risk uh, from falling drones. Uh, not to mention you start shooting at the sky. There's other things that are flying in the sky like airplanes. Uh, and then potentially hitting airplanes, which, yeah, whatever. Uh, the 500-foot ceiling mentioned is above the 400-foot limit for most drone operators anyway. Obviously, this legislation could seriously disrupt legitimate commercial drone operation, like real estate photography, for example, or agriculture, delivery. Uh, now, remember that delivery drone that got shot in Florida a couple years ago? Uh, yeah, it just highlights that there is a big tension, I think, right now between privacy rights and airspace safety and then regulation in general. So uh, pilots in Florida need to be extra cautious. I think this goes to show that we as drone operators need to make sure that we also respect private property and try to be careful flying over other people's house. And then in our third story this week, Oregon is cracking down hard, and again, caps right here, on drone interference with emergency operations. The uh, Oregon House anonymously passed House Bill 3426, which significantly bumps up the penalties if you are inten intentionally, that's the keyword right here, interfering with firefighters, uh, law enforcement, or search and rescue using a drone. Uh, it's now potentially a Class C felony uh, that could mean up to five years in prison, 125000 dollars in fines. Even unintentional interference is now a class B misdemeanor carrying up to six months in jail and a $2,500 fine. Uh, this is a pretty steep penalty for potentially not knowing any better, so make sure you educate yourself. So obviously this is a reminder, do not fly near uh, firefighting operations, near wildfires, which are going to be coming uh, in the next couple months as the uh, summer rolls in. And finally this week, some uh, maybe good news. Uh, I know this is sometimes uh, hard to, uh, you know, talk about all these bills and trying to stay positive, but uh, this is coming from uh, Skybras. Skybras is now uh, partnering with Paladin uh, to integrate real-time 3D modeling into their drone as first responder uh, program. So uh, DFR, you've heard that term before. Uh, this is reportedly a first for the public safety sector. Uh, Skybras has this patented technology that's called videogrammetry, where you're going to be turning drone videos into an accurate 3D model uh, in just a few minutes. Now, the problem usually is that getting the SD card out of the drone and uploading the data uh, takes some critical time during incidents. Now, what this partnership does is that it combines SkyBrowse software with the Paladin Autonomous Drone, which have are connected through LTE. Now, because they're connected through LTE, uh, it gives them a range of up to five miles or eight kilometers to go fly, you know, uh, beyond visual line of sight, and then they can automatically send the video data uh, during the flight. Now that video gets processed in near real time using SkyBrow's uh, software, and then uh, the result is a high fidelity 3D model of an incident scene. Uh, think like a car crash, for example, or structure fire, or any kind of tactical situation. And then we get uh, generated and delivered into the command staff and uh, to the responding units before they even arrive on the scene. So these models can be viewed on the Paladin Watchtower software, and then they include uh, tools to do measurement, annotation, and other things. So this gives the first responder a, a ton of situational awareness that uh, they would need when they get to the scene. All right, that's all we have for you this week. Join us later for a happy hour in the community. We also have a live Q&A on Monday, as always, and then post-flight on Monday in the premium community. So we'll see you then.